um, hello Deb, hit the IT guy here and before I start this video, I quickly want to acknowledge the comments that I've been getting on my recent videos about uh, creating a video on Shopify UI extension and um, I am working on that video. I would ask you to bear with me for just a little amount of time. But uh, today I am bringing you a simple use case about adding engraving options on your Shopify products. So the requirement of this uh, product uh, of this uh, video is that let's say that I have this product right here, which is a air heater, but I want something engraved on it. Um, where on the product that doesn't matter, but uh, I want to uh, add a name for the engraving of this product. So for this one, um, if you do a simple Google search, uh, they tell you about writing some code on the Shopify admin site. So this is how you do it. So you go into your uh, Shopify admin, uh, you click on online store, then the themes is pre-selected here and then you choose the theme that is currently active and it is denoted by this current theme tag here and you click this three dots here and you click on edit code and then you edit code on it. So you would have to find uh, in sections main product dot liquid. Um, yeah, here we go. So when you click main product dot liquid, um, it will show the code uh, in it as of then. And after that, you have to put some code here. Now, where you can get your code from is this website, uh, UI Elements Generator dot myshopify dot com. Just visit this website. Click on um, social icons, card attribute, line item property. So just click on the card attribute, and you can select what kind of field you want. Um, what is the label would be if it is required or not then you can just copy this code and come back here and what you are looking for is the element right here one sec yeah right here you are searching for the form product uh, element here you would have to find this element and you have to paste the code inside it but uh, I found a problem here, which is they tell you straightforward what code you have to paste, but there is no conditional here. Because if you put this code in the product liquid as they tell you to do right here, it will apply to all of the products uh, on your store. So we need some way to distinguish whether some product is engravable or not. And um, this is how we do it. So I have put this condition here. If products.tags contains engravable, only then I'm rendering uh, whatever is inside here. So in the first example, uh, when we come at this product, we don't see anything about engraving because the tag isn't there. But um, if I copy the this thing right here and search it in click exit products. If I search this one and yeah, the product is right here come down to tags and just add engraveable yeah and hit select hit save so it's saved now if i go back and refresh yeah right here i, I think i had to refresh it a couple times so here's the engraving name. Um, I have put the placeholder as Jane. You can put anything. So let's say we put uh, the ID guy. And if I put the color uh, choice as brown, and if I click add to cart, so see, you can see the engraved field right here. And you can click view my cart. And sorry, I have one product already in my cart. I will remove that. And yeah, here it is. Electrical outlet US, engrave is hit the IT guy and color is brown and you can hit checkout. And after that, you will also see this option right here. Fill out the details and place the order and that's it. So let me do that. Thanks. 
फाइव पहले देखते हैं जेसन इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ दिस ऑर्डर then if i search so it's the it guy here then yeah we can in the properties field of the line items uh, we can find it right here is the line items parent property and inside this there is a properties and inside this is a ob object engrave so the it guy color brown so this is how we can add uh, engraving options on um, our products and not add so if we remove the engraveable tags on the product then no longer that would be um, accessible so pretty simple use case uh, now let's move on to the next use case where we would check for pin code validation so for this one um, okay so what we can do here is go back to the products let's say this one uh, is uh, is eligible for pin code validation so what we can do here is just add pin pin code validate tag yeah so i will add this tag i will click um preview let me see if uh, yeah this tag is not appearing at all so we are good so now our requirement is whichever product has the tag uh, pin code validate is the one um, that we will check for pin code whether it is actually shippable to that pin code or not okay so okay yeah here is our product and here is our um, code so right above that i will add a similar looking condition where Yeah, here we go. So we can just do copy this, and we can add pin code validate. Yeah. we can check put this right here we can do um then so good then we can do properties then go actually we don't need to submit this or whatever so we don't need the name attribute here um placeholder is we will keep it blank I need to add the code field and let's see. Check pin code availability. Yeah, and then we can do um button. H equal to nothing. Last equal to Check pin code. Check status. Hit save. After that, just hit refresh. Yeah, here we go. So here we have the check pin code availability text box here, and we have this. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the uh, why is it? Um, 
Okay, so I think I have to add some styling to it. Here. Okay, so now if I click check status, yeah, nothing happens. Cool. So then after that, what we can do is copy this and go to the bottom. Can we inject our script tag here? Yeah, here we go. So if I do product that contains the input validate answer. I have to give it to Shopify. Liquid is kind of dope. Kind of easy to understand. It's pretty easy to you know read if product tags contain pin code validate. I was thinking more from a JavaScript standpoint that it must have an include function, but it doesn't, so it quite cool. Yeah. Can we do this? So if I hit save. Cool. If I just refresh this. Will I get a? I don't think so. It says dollar is not defined. All right. So now if I do, okay, cool. At this point, we have written um, some code here about. Uh, so we have taken this constant PC element, uh, which is check pin code button. After that, we have added an event listener, which is click, and the event would be, uh, it would prevent the default action alert here and return false. So if I go here and if I put anything in it and click check status, it says here. Okay, cool. So we have got this down. All right. So now I think we can put a um, fetch. What is a JavaScript Ajax? I'm really hesitant, um, reluctant towards adding jQuery into the Shopify element for some reason. I don't think it should be, it would be a good idea to just inject jQuery in it because it would make our lives easier, but still. From this we can handle. Um, so we can put our own ng rock URL here. Actually, let's do that. So if I do object and copy it, after this just put it here, yeah, and go to add slash validate pin code dot get element by Dot value. So then, um, we just put I think product Yeah, we can take this. So I will put to this one and after that we can just put it by this product ID and same name equal to dot id id equals dot id cool so then we can hit save dot id we can just take that yeah here we go we'll start with this Product ID, we can do this. 
hit save and after that you just have to define this route and yeah because I think we would need route get valid encode which is to move controller for class check encode availability product dot check availability cool so let's take this and for home controller public function this yeah so you can do that and we are done so then we I can close this so I think it has um, we have clear the optimization cache that's it and and we can just do console.log my JSON it save cool so let's go back hit refresh Okay, so await is not valid here. So we can just do remove this. Refresh. Refresh again. Okay. Cool. So we can just do five, one, five, one, three, five, six, seven. Check status. Why did it jump here? Oh, so we can remove that as well. Yeah. Um, so store is a problem here, isn't it? URL. This. Okay, so I managed to solve this issue. So what I did was a I installed this middleware course, which I never needed to do. So remove that. And yeah, it is removed from here. Cool. Basically, yeah, kernel is fine. Course PHP, we don't need it here. So let me just delete that. Cool. So middleware is just fine. Uh, let's put validate pin code in accept anyway that doesn't hurt and uh, get validate pin code is fine after that in config cost.php yeah there was one change which was in paths this was blank by default so i just made a star wildcard character in it so yeah after that just run to check and optimize and you should be fine so after that um, if you just click so it says response.json is not a function, so we will remove that. Um, so yeah, so after that, um, clear any cache or whatever. So check status. There we go. Now we have message available, status true. So now you can just write a logic um, right here. Cool, you can do that. Yeah. So let me just refresh. Let me make a second again. Clear this. Code five 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 six five seven. Check status. 
there we go available cool so yeah that's uh that's where we can wrap this video um all the code right here i will provide that in um, the description box and make sure to check uh in the products tab um the tags field where pin code validate has to be there only then it will render otherwise it won't render at all so yeah thank you for watching and be, be subscribed for my next video on checkout ui extension and i'll see you next time thank you